In this lecture we're going to look at high resolution NMR. By the end of this lecture you should be able to analyse high resolution proton NMR spectra. This is the final lecture on experimental determination of structure. In the previous lecture we looked at low, low resolution nuclear resonance and in this lecture we're going to look at an analysis of high resolution proton NMR spectra. Now it occurs to me that in the previous lecture I never quite, I don't think I used the expression proton NMR. What that's referring to is just the fact that NMR relies on the absorption of radio waves by the nuclei of hydrogen atoms and of course the nuclei of hydrogen atoms are just protons. So I just remind you that from NMR you get information about hydrogen atoms and their environments. Right, let's remind ourselves what the low resolution proton NMR spectra of ethoxyethane looks like. This is our main looked at in the previous lecture. So there's two environments of hydrogen atoms. These three hydrogens and these three hydrogens are all in the same environment which give rise to a peak at round about one. Then these four hydrogens are in a second environment and they give rise to a peak around about three and a half. Slightly smaller peak than the one at one because there's only four hydrogens as opposed to six hydrogens. Okay, so that's the low resolution spectra of uh, ethoxyethane. However, in high resolution, we can look at these peaks, right, magnify them and look at these peaks in a little bit more detail. And what we find, they have a structure. Sometimes there are single peaks, sometimes there are doublets, sometimes there are triplets, quartets, etc. So they're split up the peaks and that can give us even more information about the environment of the hydrogen atoms. So let's look at a high resolution spectra of ethoxyethane. So here is the high resolution NMR spectra for ethoxyethane. Now we see the two peaks, one about one and one about 3.5. But as you can see, they're split up into multiplets. So why does that happen and how do we know whether we end up with a triplet, a quartet, quartet or whatever? Right, the basic rule is that it's the interaction of hydrogen atoms on the neighbouring carbon atoms which cause the splitting. Okay, so if you look at one of the hydrogens responsible for this peak, you can pick any one of the six, they're all equivalent. Okay. And we look not at the carbon it's attached to, but its neighbouring carbon. So this is its neighbouring carbon here, and it's got two hydrogen atoms attached to it. So that's going to cause splitting. So do, how do, do we know if it splits into a triplet or a quartet? The basic rule is that the number of peaks you get is n plus 1, where n is the number of hydrogen atoms on the neighbouring carbon atom. So there's the neighbouring carbon atom, contains two hydrogens, so we get a three peaks or a triplet. Then if we look at the other hydrogen environment, let's just pick that one. So we look at its neighbouring carbon atom, so to the left we've got an oxygen, so that's not a carbon atom. To the right we've got a carbon and it's got one, two, three hydrogens attached to it. So we get three plus one peaks, so it gets split into a quartet. Let's look at another example. So here's the low resolution spectra of ethanol and this hydrogen here is responsible for this peak, these two hydrogens are responsible for this peak, these three here are responsible for this peak. Okay. So let's look at the high resolution spectra. Okay, so these three hydrogens here okay, are responsible for this peak and we get a triplet. Because the neighbouring carbon atom has got two hydrogens so we get a triplet. 
the CH2 peak, the neighbouring carbon atom has got one, two, three hydrogens, so it gets split into a quartet. And then the final H here, well this is a wee bit confusing because its neighbouring carbon atom has got two hydrogens, but we've just got a singlet. And in fact, what we find is that OH and indeed NH groups are not split and nor do they cause splitting. So the splitting is only for hydrogens which are attached to carbons and they're only split by hydrogens attached to neighbouring carbons. So the OH will not cause splitting and will not be split itself. Okay. Finally, let's look at this molecule and uh, you're never going to be asked to sketch a high resolution NMR spectra but you might be asked how many multiplets would a particular peak be split into or you might have to analyse a spectra. So two things to do here firstly try and work out how many different environments there are of hydrogen atoms in this molecule. Pause the video for a second, try and work that out. Okay, so these three hydrogens here are all in the same environment. So that's one environment. These two hydrogens here are in a different environment. This hydrogen is in a different environment. So is this one and so are those three there. So in fact there's five different environments of hydrogen atoms in this molecule. I'm not going to ask you to draw the spectra but what I'd want you to do is look at all five and decide how many multiplets would be in the peak. So again pause the video have a wee look at that and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, this, these hydrogens here, well, the neighbouring carbon atom, there's two hydrogens, so this will be split into three, that will be into a triplet. These hydrogen atoms, well, it's got two neighbouring carbons, which we haven't come across so far. It's got a carbon there and a carbon there. So on this side, there's one, two, three, and on this side, there's one. Remember that OH does not cause splitting or is split. So there's one, two, three, four hydrogens on neighbouring carbons. So that these this peak will be split into a quintet into five. What about this hydrogen? Well, neighbouring carbon, there's one, two, three, four, five. So it's got five hydrogens on neighbouring carbons. So that will be split into six. This hydrogen here on an OH group does not get split so that will be a singlet. And finally the peak due to these hydrogens or the neighbouring carbon there's one. So this one will be split into a doublet. Okay so with high resolution NMR spectra we get even more information about the structure of the molecule uh, by seeing how many hydrogens are on neighbouring carbon atoms. So with looking at all the experimental determination stuff, you know, we've got empirical formula from the elemental analysis, then we have NMR, IR, uh, mass spectrometry. So by combination of these te techniques, it's usually possible to work out the molecular structure of any unknown sample. You don't always need to use all four techniques, but uh, usually you usually need a combination of several of them. So by now you should be able to analyse high resolution proton NMR spectra.